أشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العباد إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Hold on, let me fix this mic Inshallah, we're going to go ahead and get started with the next lecture for today which is a special lecture. In fact, this is the second part of a special lecture that I'm giving on the Muslim woman and her relationship with others. Last week we talked about the relationship that the Muslim woman should have with her sisters in Islam. Today I want to focus in on the relationship that the Muslim woman should have with her community. And we need to understand that the Muslim woman, she's not much different than the Muslim man. Like the Muslim man, the Muslim woman has a mission in life. And so she is required to be as effective and active and social as her particular circumstances and capabilities will allow. The Muslim woman should mix with other women as much as she can, and she should deal with them in accordance with the word, the Islamic attitudes and behavior that distinguishes her from other women. And this is what we fail to understand as Muslims. If we would live our lives and develop the attitudes, the character, and the behavior that Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has encouraged us to do, then we would stand out over all other nations. They will look up to us because we would be a, mo a model and an example and a witness over them. Okay? Wherever the Muslim woman is found, she should become a beacon of guidance. And she should be a positive source of correction and education through her words and her actions. The Muslim woman who has been truly guided by the Quran and the authentic Sunnah is a woman who has a refined social personality of the highest degree, which qualifies her to undertake her duty of calling other women to Islam and opening their hearts and their minds to the guidance of this great religion, which is what elevated the status of women and made them higher even at an early age. Before Islam, guys, women were viewed as being nothing more than animals. In fact, the Christians, they viewed the woman as not even having a soul, not even being human, not even possessing a soul. But Islam came about in the 8th, in the eighth 6th, 6th century, and Islam liberated women and gave us rights that they never had before Islam. Islam is the only religion or way of life that made a woman equal to man spiritually. The Muslim woman who truly understands the teachings of her religion, she will stand out in every women's gathering that she attends. And she will demonstrate the true values of her religion and the practical application of those values. So we need to ask ourselves, are we this type of woman? Do we stand out? Are we distinguished from the other women that we come in contact with? Ask yourself that as we go over this uh, lecture for the day. 
Ask yourself, do you possess the qualities that we talk about today? And one of the first qualities that the Muslim woman has when it comes to her community is this. She has a good attitude towards others. And she treats them well. This means that she is friendly. She's humble. She's gentle of speech. And she's tactful. She likes others. And other people like her. If the Muslim moderators, okay, if the Muslim woman adheres to this type of character and this type of attitude, then she would be following the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said that the best of people in their attitude the best of people is the one who has a good attitude towards others. Again, the example for us is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a good attitude. One of the companions once said, I used to serve the messenger for ten years, and he never said to me the smallest word of contempt. If I did anything, he never said, why did you do that? And if I did not do something, he never said, why did you not do such and such? The Prophet wasalam, was of the best character. Allah put him upon that. Allah made him stand on the exalted standard of character. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to tell his companions, amongst the best of you are those who have the best attitude towards others. And again, this wasn't just for men. This applied to women too. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The most beloved to me and the closest to me on the day of judgment will be those of you who have the best attitudes. And the most hateful to me and the furthest away from me on the day of judgment will be the boasters and the prattlers and the proud and the arrogant. Subhanallah, which category do you fit in as a Muslim? Which category do you fit in as a Muslim woman? Understand that the companions, men and women alike, they used to hear the Prophet's teachings. And they would see with their own eyes the excellent way in which he used to deal with people. So they would obey his words. And they would follow his example. One of the companions once said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was merciful. Nobody came to him without receiving a promise of his help, which he would fulfill if he had the means to do so. On one occasion, the economic for the prayer had been given. And a Bedouin man came to the prophet and took hold of his cloak and said, I still have some matter which is outstanding, and I do not want to forget it. So the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, went with him and resolved the matter, and then he came back to pray. Subhanallah, this was how our prophet was. This is an example of what being merciful means. Here's a Bedouin who came to the prophet when it was time to pray. The prophet didn't tell him, wait a minute, let me pray first. The prophet went on ahead and took care of this person's matter and then came back to pray. How many of you would have done that if someone came asking for your help? If good attitudes and manners among non-Muslims 
are the result of a good upbringing and solid education, then among Muslims, such good attitudes come above all from the guidance of Islam, which makes good attitudes a basic characteristic of the Muslim, which will raise his status in this world and will weigh heavily in his favor in the hereafter. Understand that no deed will count for more on the day of judgment than a person's good attitude. Good attitude. Something to think about. The Prophet ﷺ once said, nothing will weigh more heavily in the balance of the believing servant on the day of judgment than a good attitude towards others. Because Allah hates those who utter vile words and obscene speech. SubhanAllah. So we need to work on our attitude as Muslim women here. Islam has made this good attitude towards others an essential part of faith. And this is what the Prophet meant when he said the most perfect in faith of the believers are those who are best in their attitudes towards others. When we talk about checking our attitude, this also means being able to not talk above the people. In other words, don't look down on others. We need to work on being more down to earth with the people, talking to them on their level, dealing with them on their level without demeaning them. So many of us have a hard time with this. Understand that the Prophet wasalam, said, a good attitude is a blessing, and a bad attitude is a calamity. SubhanAllah. How many of you have the good attitude, and how many of you have a bad one? We need to check ourselves to see. How do you deal with other people? How do you get along with them? Do the people like you? Or do they run away from you when you come around? Do the people seek you out? Or do they hide from you when you come around? Your attitude will determine the answer to that question. The Muslim woman, not only does she have a good attitude with others, but she is also truthful with them. Because she has absorbed the teachings of Islam, which encourages truthfulness, and she regards it as the chief of virtues. She understands that lying is forbidden, and lying is regarded as the source of all evils. The Muslim woman believes that truthfulness naturally leads to goodness which will admit her into paradise, whereas falsehood leads to iniquity, which will send her to the hellfire. This is something we need to reflect upon. The Prophet ﷺ said, Truthfulness leads to piety, and piety leads to paradise. A man continues to speak the truth until he is recorded in the sight of Allah as a sincere lover of truth, whereas falsehood leads to iniquity, and iniquity leads to hell. A man will continue to speak falsehood until he is recorded in the sight of Allah to be a liar, subhanAllah. And one of the worst things that you can imagine happening to yourself would be to have to stand before Allah on a day of judgment as a liar. What a horrible thing to imagine. So therefore, the Muslim woman is keen to be a sincere lover of truth. And she strives to be truthful in her words and her actions. And this is something that many of us need to work on more. A lot of times we may do good deeds, 
but we're doing them for the wrong reason. Be truthful in why you're doing whatever it is you do. Part of being truthful means that you have to also avoid giving false statements. We have to understand that Allah orders us in the Quran. He commands us. He says in the interpretation, the meaning, and shun the word that is false. So the true Muslim woman doesn't go around giving false statements. She doesn't go around bearing witness to things that are not true, swearing to things that never happened. Because she knows this is haram. She knows that this would damage her honor, her credibility. And this will mark her as being a twisted and worthless person in the sight of others. The Prophet ﷺ once said, Shall I not tell you of the most serious of the major sins? He said, associating partners with Allah and disobeying your parents and giving false witness. And he kept repeating and giving false And the reasons for him repeating it over and over again was to show how bad a thing it is to do. So we need to check ourselves as Muslim women. And make sure that we're not only down to earth with the people, but that we are truthful and that we don't go around giving false statements. Instead, what the true Muslim woman does is she seeks to give sincere advice. She seeks to offer sincere advice to every woman she comes into contact with. Who has, been de de uh, uh, who has deviated away from the guidance of Allah. The true Muslim woman, she offers sincere advice. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the religion is based on sincerity, sincerity to Allah, to His book, to His prophet, to the leaders of the Muslims, and to the common folk. So the true Muslim woman, she reflects upon this. And if she sees her sister in faith about to walk down a path that she shouldn't walk down, she will gently pull her to the side and try to talk her out of it. How many of us do this? How many of us give sincere advice to our sisters in Islam? How many of us will try to stop our sister from doing something that may harm her? And how many of us sit back and say, let her hang herself? In addition to this, the true Muslim woman whose soul has been purified by Islam and cleansed of the stains of selfishness and love of show, she also guides others to righteous deeds when she knows of them so that goodness will come to light and the people will benefit from it. She reflects upon the words of the Prophet when the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever guides others to do good will have a reward like that of the person who does the good deed. For example, if you teach a person how to pray, every time that person goes to pray, you will get the reward for that. If you teach a person how to make voodoo, every time that person makes voodoo, you will get rewarded for that. So this is why the true Muslim woman, she strives to guide others to do righteous deeds. She shares her knowledge 
and her understanding of Islam with others and strives to encourage them to do what is right. And also, she does not cheat or deceive or stab people in the back while doing these things. And this is something else we need to reflect upon because so many of us are busy deceiving one another or stabbing each other in the back. We need to reflect upon the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, whoever bears arms against us is not one of us. And whoever cheats us is not one of us. So we have to work on being honest, not only in our words, but in the way we treat each other too. This means we don't cheat each other out of money, out of food, or anything else. We don't dece deceive each other. We don't go around stabbing each other in the back. We don't betray one another. And this is something that's so hard to find nowadays, true trust, because so many people are quick to betray each other. So many Muslim women suffer from this because women are weaker than men. And this is also one of the reasons why there, be, why there will be more women in hell than men. You know, women can betray one another's trust. They can betray each other. Understand that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said every traitor will have a banner on the day of judgment and it will be said, this is the betrayer of so-and-so. SubhanAllah, imagine that. Imagine that. See us all standing together, each of us wearing banners. This is the betrayer of Amina Fresno. This is the betrayer of Layla Nasheba. This is the betrayer of Um Sakina. SubhanAllah, what a horrible thing to imagine. You're standing there holding a flag for the world to see that you betrayed this Muslim. You turned against this Muslim, this sister in Islam who trusted you, who loved you. You betrayed her. And now the whole creation gets to see it. Understand that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah said that there are three whom he will oppose on the day of judgment. One is a person who gave his word and then betrayed it. SubhanAllah. How many of us give our words? We promise to do things. And we don't do them. We promise to, to do stuff and we, we don't come through. SubhanAllah. Allah will oppose you on the day of judgment. And you'll be standing there holding that little red flag so the whole creation can see it. So the true Muslim woman who has been guided by Islam she steers clear from all forms of deceit and backstabbing. She reflects upon the words of the Prophet. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there are four features, and whoever has all of them is a true hypocrite. And whoever has one of them has the qualities of a hypocrite. And one of those features is he betrays his trust. SubhanAllah. So the Muslim woman stays clear of backstabbing and deceit, and she works on keeping her promises. When she makes a promise to do something, she keeps it. She would not make a promise that she couldn't come through with. Because she doesn't want to be a hypocrite. She doesn't want to have a characteristic of one either. 
Instead, she strives to be frank and open in her words and her opinions. And she tries to stay away from hypocrisy and flattery and false speech. SubhanAllah, how many of us fall in this category? How many of us keep our promises? And how many of us break them? As you guys can see, being a true Muslim woman is not an easy task. It's a hard task to do. Another quality of the true Muslim woman is that she is characterized by her shyness. Yes, shyness is a part of faith too. Shyness is a characteristic of a believer too. But when we talk about shyness in this sense, we're talking about knowing her limits. Knowing her limits and not transgressing them. For example, our Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was shy too. He was more shy than a virgin hiding in her own room. This type of shyness means that we would watch what we say out of our mouths. Saying vulgar things should make a person shy. You should be too shy to say vulgar things, to be obscene. You should be too shy to use profanity. You should be too shy to want to mix with the opposite sex. It should be a natural shyness about you as a Muslim woman that you would never even think of free mixing, sitting in the same room next to a man in a chair. SubhanAllah. Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shyness brings nothing but good. And in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Faith has over 70 branches. The greatest branch is saying, La ilaha illallah. And the least of the branches is, is shyness. SubhanAllah. How many of us are shy? This is something that we talked about the other day in the Tall Heat class. You know, somebody asked a question about shyness. And remember I told you guys, believe it or not, I'm a shy person. As outspoken as I am, as direct as I am, as strong as my voice may carry, I am a very shy person. And I'm a recluse. I am. I'm very, I'm a, I'm a recluse. I like to stay in my house. I'm afraid to be around people. Some people, you know, the true Muslim woman is shy, and she's polite, and she's gentle, and she's sensitive to the feelings of others. She never says or does anything that may harm people or offend their dignity. A lot of us have to work on this characteristic here. Some of us, we're not sensitive enough. Some of us, we can say some things that can hurt others. We have to work on that. Many of us do. Many of us as women. Also, another characteristic of the Muslim woman that helps her to relate to the people in her community is she doesn't go around begging. She doesn't go around asking for a handout. If the true Muslim woman is faced with difficulties or afflicted with poverty, she seeks refuge in patience and self-pride. Remember we talked about the two different types of pride. You have inner pride and outer pride. Outer pride is what's haram. Outer pride is arrogance and conceit. 
Whereas inner pride is what we need in order to be strong Muslims. Inner pride is self-respect, self-love, self-confidence. We need these things in order to make it to the status of a true believing woman. So the true believing woman, she's too proud to go around begging from others. In fact, we are encouraged as Muslim women to be proud and independent and patient. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever refrains from asking from the people, Allah will help him. And whoever tries to be independent, Allah will enrich him. And whoever tries to be patient, Allah will give him patience. And no one has given a better or greater gift than patience. And again, this applies to men and women. So we women need to work on our independence. Work on being too proud to go around asking and begging from others. Also, another quality needed for the true Muslim woman to be able to interact within her community is, and we've talked about this one before, she does not interfere in that which does not concern her. And this is a really big problem for women. Because women, it's our nature to want to be nosy into somebody else's business. Well, the true Muslim woman is wise and discerning. She does not interfere in that which does not concern her nor does she concern herself with the private lives of the women around her. She doesn't go around sticking her nose into their affairs, nor does she force herself on them in any way. So instead, she avoids interfering in that which does not concern her, and she protects herself from vain and idle talk. The Prophet ﷺ once said, a sign of a person's being a good Muslim is that he should leave alone that which does not concern him. If it ain't none of your business, leave it alone. It ain't none of your business what's going on with that sister over there and her husband. It ain't none of your business why she's working and her husband ain't. It ain't none of your business why them children look like they look. That ain't none of your business. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah likes three things for you, and he dislikes three other things from you. Allah likes for you to worship him and to not associate partners with him. And he likes for you to hold fast all together by the rope which he stretches out for you and to not be divided amongst yourself. And he dislikes for you to pass on stories and gossip and to ask too many questions. So many Muslim women like to gossip. So many Muslim women like to pass on stories. So many Muslim women like to go around asking too many questions about things that ain't none of their business. So many Muslim women like to interfere in the private affairs of others. Well, understand the true Muslim woman, she stays away from all of this. She stays away from sticking her nose in other people's business, and she also refrains herself from slandering the honor of others. And she refrains herself from seeking out other people's faults. The God-fearing Muslim woman, she restrains her tongue. And she acts in accordance with the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah, 
which issues a severe warning to those corrupt men and women who indulge in slandering, especially when it's slandering the honor of others. A law tells us in the interpretation of the meaning, those who love to see scandal published, broadcast among the believers will have a grievous penalty in this life and in the hereafter. And by the way, that's the dialil for the answer I gave the other day when somebody asked me, what's the punishment for slander, for liking to, to, to for be a scandalous? The punishment for being scandalous is you will, you will not just be punished in the hereafter. You're going to be punished in this world too. Oh, yeah. Allah is going to get you in this world too. The one who indulges in the slander of people's honor and the spreading of news is just like the one who commits the scandalous deed. One of the companions once said, the one who tells the news of a scandal and the one who spread the news, they are both equally sinful. And again, so many women fall victim to this because women have a problem controlling their mouths. The true Muslim woman, she stays away from some bad speech. She doesn't spy on others. She doesn't go around seeking the faults of others. The Prophet ﷺ once said, Do not hurt the feelings of the servants of Allah. Do not embarrass them. Do not seek to expose their faults. Whoever seeks to expose the faults of his Muslim brother, Allah will seek to expose his faults and him, even if he hides in his own. SubhanAllah. So now you want to spy on somebody else. You want to try to trick somebody else, catch somebody else doing something bad. So you can go back and tell the rest of the Muslims about it. Well, guess what? Allah is going to do it to you. It's going to, he's going to expose you. And when he does, there's nothing you can do to hide from it. So the true Muslim woman, she stays away from slander. She stays away from all scandalous talk. And she doesn't show off. And she doesn't boast. Because boasting and showing off is just as dangerous as slander. Okay? Also, the true Muslim woman, she's also a person who is fair in her judgments. She may once be put in a position where she is required to form an opinion or a judgment about a person or a matter. And this is where her faith comes in. The true Muslim woman judges fairly, and she is never unjust or biased, and she's never influenced by other people's opinions. She reflects upon the words of Allah, where Allah says, and the interpretation, the meaning, Allah does command you to render back your trust to whom they are due. And when you judge between man, that you judge with justice. So justice, this is something that the Muslim woman applies to her character. Okay? Okay, um, sorry. Okay, yes, so the Muslim woman is therefore very just in all her dealings. Uh, she's fair in her dealings. Uh, if she's called uh, to give a decision or, or, or something, she's going to be just. She's not going to be swayed by what other people want her to say or think she should say. And also the Muslim woman does not go around oppressing or mistreating other people. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, keep away from oppression, because oppression is a darkness on the day of judgment. And also the Prophet ﷺ has told us that Allah has said, O oh my servants, I have forbidden oppression for myself and made it forbidden amongst you. So do not go around oppressing one another. We have to understand, guys, that any time we hurt another Muslim, that we infringe on their rights or violate the rights of another Muslim, we have oppressed them. So even if you go so far as to slander somebody or talk bad about a person, you've oppressed them. The Prophet ﷺ said, a Muslim is the brother of another Muslim. He said, whoever relieves his brother from some distress, Allah will relieve him of some of his on the day of judgment. And whoever covers the fault of another Muslimness and kindness as if he was his old friend, and when the man left, Aisha asked him, why did you treat him so nicely when he's such a bad person? And the prophet answered her back. He said, oh, Aisha, the worst of the people in the sight of Allah is the one who is shunned by others or whom people treat nicely because they fear his sharp tongue. SubhanAllah. So even if it's a person that you don't like, you still want to treat them with respect. You want to be friendly to them, compassionate towards them, and kind towards them. And this is also a way of giving dawah. Who knows? You may end up impressing that person and may cause that person to change his nature, cause that person to become a better person. Okay? So this is another characteristic of the believing Muslim woman. And this is a characteristic that she uses when dealing with the people in her community. She's fair and nice and kind to them, even if it's a person that she doesn't like. And also, she doesn't rejoice in the misfortunes of others. If she hears about something bad happening to a person, she doesn't rejoice in it. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Do not express malicious joy at the misfortunes of your brother, for Allah will have mercy on him and inflict the misfortune on you, subhanAllah. Some of us like to hear bad news about other people, especially if that's a person that we're jealous of. If it's a sister that you're jealous of, you may get happy to hear that something bad happened to her. Well, the true Muslim woman does not do that because she knows that if that person handles their calamity, they're going to come out a step closer to Allah. And Allah will end up retaliating against you. So we don't go around rejoicing at other people's misfortunes. And we refrain from backbiting, from gossip. We refrain from slander. We refrain from, uh, from all these other evil characteristics that so many of us women suffer from which can end up affecting the whole community. Because what comes out of our mouths can be spread around. And on that note, I'm going to stop right here for today. Tomorrow, what...